Good afternoon, brothers and sisters, and welcome to Blue Rose Mama. You know, I've been pondering lately the scriptures of the Mass the past couple of weeks and the parables that Jesus taught on the kingdom of heaven. He tells us about the coin that is lost and ardently sought by the woman of the house. He speaks of the hidden treasure that is worth selling everything one owns in order to buy the land in which it is hidden. He brings forth a story of yeast that signifies future but not yet realized growth. And today we read of the fishing net which perhaps signifies the poverty of not knowing who will be saved and who will not. So I'm thinking of all of these parables as Jesus' way of expressing poverty of spirit. Jesus tells us in Matthew chapter 5 verse 3 in the Sermon on the Mount, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. On July 8, 2010, Jesus spoke the following words to our love crucified family. I wish to teach you about poverty, the spirit of poverty. There is physical poverty, but the spirit of poverty is much more beneficial for your soul. The spirit of poverty is lived when you allow the Holy Spirit my blessed mother and myself to strip you of everything interiorly your desires expectations plans attachments securities consolations in friendships even consolations from me so that you are left completely empty it is a soul that has been stripped of everything that is empty and can be filled with my life end of quote Currently, I'm reading a small but deeply profound book called Poverty of Spirit by Johann Metz. The author would define the poor in spirit as those who are able to accept the poverty of their own humanity, something he equates with love of self. He says, understood correctly, our love for ourselves, our yes to self, may be regarded as the categorical imperative of the Christian faith. You shall lovingly accept the humanity entrusted to you. You shall be obedient to your destiny. You shall not continually try to escape it. You shall be true to yourself. You shall embrace yourself. Jesus tells us how we can participate in this work of becoming completely empty of the ego, the false self, so that our true selves, the saints he created us to be, can emerge. Again, from the message of July 8, 2010, he tells us, Allow yourself to be perfected through suffering. Suffer with greater trust in me. Suffer with greater abandonment and love. End of quote. And Jesus doesn't ask of us what he himself didn't first endure. Going back to Johann Metz, we read, Have we really understood the impoverishment that Christ endured? Everything was taken from him during the Passion even the love that drove him to the cross. No longer did he savor his own love. No longer did he feel any spark of enthusiasm. His heart gave out and a feeling of utter helplessness came over him. Truly, he emptied himself. God's merciful hand no longer sustained him. God's countenance was hidden during the passion and Christ gaped into the darkness of nothingness and abandonment where God was no longer present. He reached his destiny attached, taught, between a despising earth that had rejected him and a faceless heaven thundering God's no to sinful humankind. Jesus paid the price of futility. He became utterly poor. In this total renunciation, however, Jesus perfected and proclaimed in action what took place in the depths of his being. He professed and accepted our humanity. He took on and endured our lot. He stepped down from his divinity. He came to us where we really are, with all our broken dreams and lost hopes, with the meaning of existence slipping through our fingers. He came and stood with us, struggling with his whole heart to have us say yes to our innate poverty. End of quote. Metz warns us that each of us is a potential rebel. By its very nature, the process of becoming our true selves and denying our false selves is embedded with danger. 
we can try to run away from ourselves, from the burdens and difficulties of our lives, from the truth of who we are. Jesus taught our Love Crucified family on January 8th of this year. An obstinate heart commits a grave sin against the Holy Spirit. It does not allow the grace of redemption to touch his inner being. Redemption is God's gift to humanity, purchased for us through Christ's passion, death, and resurrection. Yet because we have been created with free will, we have to say yes to receive this gift. Our yes means we are willing to participate in our redemption by opening our hearts wide to Christ so that through his blood, the spirit can cleanse us, purify us, and empty us to make us a new creation in God's image and likeness. An obstinate heart denies the Holy Spirit the gift of self-knowledge. It denies the Holy Spirit the grace of self-discovery into the recesses of his heart to encounter the false I, the person we have all become that we are not. End of quote. Yes, Jesus accepts us as we are with all our sins, brokenness, and weakness. He loves you even if your feelings for him have run cold, even if you have rebelled against his will over and over. It's not too late. Allow him to love you right now just as you are. Open your heart wide to his love. His passion proves his love for us, even now while we are still yet sinners. By accepting his love and seeking his forgiveness and the truth about ourselves, we give him permission to make us into a new creation. As we grow in spiritual poverty, we will begin to think of ourselves less and to think more of the needs of others. We will practice using our time, talents, and passions more and more in the service to others rather than ourselves. In closing, let's return to Johann Metz. He tells us, this poverty then is not just another virtue, one among many. Without it, there can be no Christianity and no imitation of Christ. It is no accident that poverty of spirit is the first of the Beatitudes. What is the sorrow of those who mourn? the suffering of the persecuted, the self-forgetfulness of the merciful, or the humility of the peacemakers. What are these if not variations of spiritual poverty? Poverty of spirit is the meeting point of heaven and earth, the mysterious place where God and humanity encounter each other." End of quote. I encourage you all to check out the book, The Simple Path to Union with God, found on lovecrucified.com in PDF form. In order to learn more about this path of spiritual poverty, may God in his great mercy bring us all to this meeting point of heaven and earth, united to our beloved Jesus. Amen.